We started as a company that is looking to revolutionize not just building and launching our own rockets, but also the entire process for how rockets are built and flown. We've built the largest metal 3D printers in the world, as well as actually launching satellites to space. Tell me a little more about the printing process. It's not just one giant piece, like you don't just start at the bottom and end at the top and there's a rocket. Right, so we printed in about 20 foot tall sections. So our target's to actually be able to build uh, an entire rocket from raw material to flight in under 60 days, which compares to about two to three years with traditional processes. And we also, through 3D printing, really view it as a way to automate the process. So we have, you know, a normal rocket has about 100,000 individual parts, and ours has less than 1,000 total major components. And then also supply chains are usually very complicated as well. So you have, you know, hundreds to thousands of suppliers um, making parts that are all ultimately built by hand in a factory that looks really impressive with lots of capex and fixed tooling. But we really see 3D printing as a way to to replace all of that tech stack, which has really existed in aerospace for the last 60 years. But there's multiple kinds of printing, because obviously you wouldn't use the same type of printer or printing process or even materials for the, the shell, the fairing, as you would for a valve or an injector or something like that. So what are, there, what are the different types that you're using? So one, we actually developed ourselves fully in-house. It's the largest metal 3D printer in the world. Uh, we call it Stargate. Stargate. Uh, yeah, so it's named after StarCraft we can actually print pieces that are up to 36 feet tall. As long as you have the amount of pylons that you need. Yes, we must construct additional pylons. We actually have pylons in our avionics system. Oh, good. Um, we have to build a lot of them. So <laughs> that's why, uh, yeah, we call them that. In some ways, it's kind of obvious, like, well, it's 3D printing is an extremely useful tool and method, but who really thought that you could apply it at this scale? How did you arrive there and how did you manage to start this company? I met my co-founder, Jordan. We were at USC. We were part of a student group called USC Rocket Lab that ended up being the first student group in the world to launch a rocket to space. That got me a job at Blue Origin. Uh, he went off to SpaceX. And while at Blue Origin, I was a propulsion engineer. So I actually got to work together with the senior team and then Jeff Bezos uh, to start the Metal 3D printing program at Blue Origin. Uh, and then Jordan at SpaceX was working on the Super Draco engine, which for them was, was 3D printed. But we really saw that everyone was just doing this uh, 3D printing, you know, part by part, and that we really felt like this was the inevitable future that we need to go to Mars because it's important for expanding possibilities for human experience. And that 3D printing was the only technology that was gonna make that future happen faster. And we could actually be that company. What were the advances that you had to make like there obviously you can't just go and get a maker bot and start making you know rockets with it right so what were the technological advances that you had to make to make it possible to 3d print the parts of the entire essentially the entire rocket the first thing we had to do is invent the world's largest metal 3d printer that's not too hard though yeah well and also yc we only had three months before we got to demo day so we had to do it very quickly and show progress so we actually worked a lot on both the material science the actual physics of how the printing process works so that you get good enough quality for being able to 3d print a rocket you know our whole rocket has about a hundred miles of printer kind of length as you build up uh, with these robots layer by layer sort of like westworld but for rockets instead of you westworld. know printing people yeah you're, you're actually making rockets um, and that's what the tech looks like and we actually had to come up with a way to simulate the printing process develop all the control algorithms using computer vision and and collecting that data and then correlating it with the material science uh, element of inspecting the material quality and building this correlation and learning matrix over time uh, so that's what we've had to develop to now be able to print you know full-scale rocket stage structures that we've actually pressure tested and proven that 3D printing works. And we've also done over 250 uh, 3D printed rocket engine tests you know, across 20 different versions of the engine. And we've done you know, over 13 different versions of the, the core printing tech. So it's just been high amounts of iteration and getting the science to work over the first two years of the company. But then the last two years has been about scale. So we went from you know, 14 people to 135 people in the last uh, about year and a half or so bolstered by, most recently we raised $140 million Series C. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. So now we're fully funded to get to our first launches. 
um, and really capitalizing on the infrastructure agreements we've won. So we actually have uh, a launch site at Cape Canaveral, Florida, which is working with the Air Force. We're only the fourth company to ever get a launch site at the Cape. And then we also have seven different engine and vehicle test stands at NASA Stennis Space Center exclusively for the next 20 years. So that kind of infrastructure platform lets us develop uh, our 3D printing tech and is big uh, an enablement by these kind of government public-private partnerships to let us build the future. How close are we to yeah. launch and what do you need to get, what do you need to prove to get to launch? Yeah, so I mean, the most recent milestone uh, on the engine development side is now we're actually, we actually increased the thrust of the engine from what was 17,000 pound thrust to now 23,000 pound thrust, which, you know, normally in hardware takes several years. You know, it's not like a lot of software companies where you can just, you know, kind of like click and drag and now it's bigger and, and everything's fine. So we've had to develop the automation and the workflow tools together with the printing process and we were able to do that in less than eight months, which is way faster. I mean, it wouldn't be physically possible with the, the existing tech. So now yeah. we've done full duration uh, turbo pump testing of yeah. both turbo pumps running simultaneously for a full 320 second test, which is the longest it would do during launch. We've done this you know, kind of full power engine chamber test, and then the printed stage structure test. And then of course we're in the avionics lab right now. So all the different electronics and flight software, individual piece parts. And the next major milestone is gonna be putting all of that together into a full stage test. How much we're on track for this year? This year? Yeah, this year. and towards the flights next year. Okay, so, so assembly this year, launching next year. Yes, 2021.